trying to spread the word that way. These guest blogs have been about aspects of the stories. And the last one I wrote, the first one was for the Beijing Reporter. Um, then I wrote one for Miss Mary Mack. And then the, um, there was a middle one in there for Karen Lord, Karen Lord yes, um, for her, her blog. Um, the Miss Mary Mack one, which was the, the very last one actually that appeared, that one um, spread further afield um, uh, very quickly. And yes, the others would have gone yeah. with the time now, they would have spread even more. Yeah. But I would hit it very quickly because of what I was writing about. So I, I want to do more things like that. I want to also do readings. Uh, I think to a certain extent the work kind of needs to be explained, not that people uh, are stupid or anything like that. It's just a matter of well, where is he coming from? And I, I kind of felt that that would be the case. I didn't know that people would really get what I'm writing about. First of all, it's, it's dealing with superheroes and bringing that into um, the novel realm. It's done, but again, you're using West Indian mythology. Um, people who have read it and who've commented on it, they pick at things that they can kind of identify with or pick at. So mm -hmm. somebody asked me, a close friend and colleague, she said, uh, the, the cover, that steel donkey. The steel donkeys aren't quite like that. And then I said, read the book and you'll understand why the steel donkey looks that way. Um, somebody else then had a, another question about uh, one of the, um, the bushes I use or something like that, or the spelling of something. It was a spelling of something. And I said, check all subs dictionary. There are about three or four spellings for that. And that's, that's the correct one. I, I used the one that's in the first instance. People were picking at things mm -hmm. instead of maybe dealing directly with the novel first. Mm -hmm. So, And I kind of knew that that would happen because of where it's coming from. And then, of course, people, another fellow said, oh, I'm not being on magic realism, but, uh, you know, Robert, since it's you, I'm going to buy the book. I just whispered to him, I said, you like comic books? He said, yeah, yeah, I loved them. I said, kick out the magic realism. This has to do with comics. If you go from that angle, you'll have a, you'll have a much better ride. And he went, oh, okay. It's a, I think just putting it out to people and having more conversations, more interviews, perhaps like this, where I can explain to people and talk to people about what the book is really doing and try to get them not to come with too many preconceived notions. I just want to write an adventure story that I hope to God is well told and that people just read and say, that was, that was fun. And the same person questioned the spelling. When she read it, mm -hmm. she said, I'm not too sure what to think of it now that I finished it, but I just kept reading and wanted to know what happened next, what happened next. I was like, okay, close enough, <laughs> you know. Those are two questions. I guess you'd have to read it to see how complete it feels to you. There mm -hmm. were other stories that I was thinking of incorporating into the novel. What happened is that I recognized that they were not part of this novel. They formed another novel. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's, it's basically 200 pages. It's um, when you break it down mm -hmm. into, the prop, into the particular format that's there, it comes to 288 pages, but it's a 200 page novel, which is a standard novel mm -hmm. length. Uh, but there were other bits, other stories, other characters, shall we say, that I had imagined initially in, in the writing, mm -hmm. um, who didn't make it into the novel. They were, they were clamoring for another book. And okay. uh, you'll recall the short story, Messiah. Yeah. Those characters will form part of a novel that I would like to write, intend to write, dealing with Messiah mm -hmm. and, and her story and taking it. They'll be rather different because the world of Messiah is one that's connected to the world of and sometimes they fly, but and sometimes they fly really does stand alone. So there won't be, right now, I don't imagine any of those characters, the, the mythological characters like the Steel Donkey, the Bakus, um, the Heart Man necessarily coming back. Uh, having said that, I could see the Heart Man making another appearance. I quite like him and he, the way he is dealt with him and sometimes they fly, could easily lead to uh, a reappearance. Um, duppies, I like duppies, you know. Uh, so I can see duppies actually coming back into this. They will be there. There will be some not exactly the same characters uh, or the full range of characters, but they love the movie. I haven't seen the movie. So I don't know. I think, I think there are certain parallels that will be natural. The three being a mystical number, the notion of young people gaining so much responsibility and oh my god what happens then to the rest of us and to the world um, I do believe that there's the potential for greatness in all of us but I think it has to be balanced with responsibility and that's what I try to hint at in this book so 
you know, with great power comes great responsibility. It's fun to have great powers. Actually, um, my business partner, Linda Dean, who's also a writer, when she read the book, she said, I, I just wish the characters had had a little bit more fun using their abilities. Um, I said, I understand what you mean. And that's one of the things that I thought about, you know, almost like a Professor X danger room type of thing. But the story didn't go that way. It wasn't anything I consciously said, no, I'm going to cut this. It's just that the story didn't go that way. And you don't always have fun with your powers. And sometimes there's a bit more that you have to think about. And sometimes corruption can be there. Self-doubt can be a danger. And it is a danger in this particular set does occur with at least, with, well, actually with all three of the characters. There's this moment of perhaps paralysis that they all go through. And um, it, that happens right up until the end. So it's not as if, oh, we get over this paralysis, we now know who we are. No, no, no. That paralysis can happen at any point in time. Even when you think you're so sure and, you have, and you're actually looking down upon people, godlike, as it were, mm -hmm. and you can still freeze. Um, but then at some point, well, maybe somebody else steps in mm -hmm. or you stop being so jammed up. I think in the case of the novel, other people step in, mm -hmm. kind of unfreeze them, like, to mm -hmm. keep that implosion from happening or to keep itself contained, and then to bring them back up to themselves again, if that answers the question.